Number 46. Determine the number of moles of compound and the number of moles of each type of atom in each of the following. Okay, so I can automatically tell you that this is going to be a huge problem. We'll try to do it as quick as we can, but obviously with you guys understanding. So there's going to be some things that you need to master first before you do this problem. And I will tell you what they are as we get into it. All right, so without further ado, let's get down to it. So we first want to find the number of moles of a compound. So that we're always going to be able to find first. Then we could transfer into the moles of each type of atom. All right. Now, all of these, I see that I'm starting off with some sort of mass, whether it's grams, grams, pounds, kilograms, or milligrams. It's all a type of mass. So how do we go from a mass to moles, right? Um, you always, oops. You always go from grams of anything, so I label anything as X, so whether it's an element or a compound, you could always go from grams of anything to moles, and I'll just say MOL, of anything by the molar mass MM, which is found on the periodic table, PT. So whenever we have to go from grams to moles, you'll always use the periodic table and you'll get that molar mass. So that's the first thing that you guys need to master. All right, so we did tons of molar mass problems, how to find a molar mass. I think it starts in question 42. So if you have the playlist on, you could just easily go back if you guys aren't comfortable with finding out molar masses. The next thing, that we should do is once we have this, once we have the overall moles of the compound, then we could find out the moles of the individual parts, so I'll say, which will be the specific types of atoms. All right, so let's get started. For A, it says that we have 25.0 grams of propylene C3H6. So start with what you're given, 25.0 grams of propylene C3H6, and we want to go to moles. So this is always conversions. So whenever we convert, remember, we times by a ratio. We put what we don't want on the opposite side. So grams of C3H6 goes on the bottom, and we want moles of C3H6 goes up on top. Now, the question is, what numbers are going to go here, right? We should know that one mole, and I'll put it up here, one mole of anything equals the molar mass mm in grams of that compound. So when you're using the molar mass, when you're using your periodic table, it will always be one mole, so the one will always go next to the moles, and you will need to find out the molar mass of the compound that they gave you. In this case, it's C3H6. So for A, I will do the molar mass for you guys, but for the rest of them, we're just going to shorthand it, all right, just so that it, this video goes a little bit more swiftly. So we have carbon, right, and we have hydrogen. To find the molar mass, remember, you always have to find out how many you have. So for carbon, there's three. For hydrogen, there's six and then you times by their respective masses on the periodic table. For carbon, it's 12.01, and for hydrogen, it's 1.008. If you want to simplify it and just say 12 and 1, be my guest. I'm just going to put the numbers that I see on the periodic table, just so that we cross our eyes. Shoot, I always say dot our eyes and cross our T's. Okay, so 3 times 12.01 is 36.03, and then 6 times 1.0008 is 6.048. So when you do that, when you find out all the parts, you just add them up, and that's the number that goes for your molar mass. So this plus 36.03, you get 42.078. So in here, one mole of C3H6 equals 42.078. 
the word gram of propylene, gram of C3H6 cancels out, and now you just do the math. So 25 divided by that answer, 42.078, is 0 0.594. You guys should also know your sig figs, but there's three sig figs that you started with here, so there should be three at the end. You always take your sig figs from what you started with, and that would be moles of the entire compound. So I'm going to put that over here. So we start off with 0 0.594 moles of the entire compound, C3H6. So that answers the first part. Now we just have to find the moles of the individual atoms. So in C3H6, you have two different types of atoms. You have carbon, right? You have carbon and you have hydrogen. So We'll do it the math way, but then you'll see there's like a shortcut way to do it. So you will start with the amount that they give you that you found out. So you have 0 0.594 moles of C3H6. And just like before, it's a conversion. So you times and you put mole of C3H6 on the bottom because you don't want it anymore. And you just want to find the individual atoms. So it would be mole of C. Then you would have to do it again for moles of H. Now, for your, we'll call this a mole ratio conversion, what numbers are going to go here and what numbers are going to go here? Well, when you're going from one mole of a compound or a mole of a compound to a mole of the individual parts, you always look at the compound. You say, if you had one whole compound, how many carbons are in that compound? Oh, there's, there's three. So that would be three moles of carbon. So all you got to do is just take the number that you found and times by three because technically these will cancel. So 0.594 times three, you get 1.78 moles of C. And that's the next part, 1.78 moles of C. Now we just got to do it again with hydrogen. So I'm just going to take my handy dandy eraser and let's just pretend that, okay, instead of three moles, what would it be for hydrogen? Well, now you look at the hydrogen in the compound. It's still going to be one whole mole of the entire compound, but in the compound you have six hydrogen. So this would be a six then. So you see what you do? All you do is you take the mole of your compound and you just multiply it by how many of each individual atom you have. It's that simple. So 0.594 times 6, you get 3.564 moles of H. So those are your three things. That's the answer for A. Now we're going to just do the same thing for B. So let me erase. Let's get a bigger eraser here so that I erase everything, and we will start over. So hopefully that made sense. We're going to pick up the pace a little bit. I know you guys can do it. Okay, so in this one they're saying 3.06 times 10 to the negative 3 grams of the amino acid glycine, which is C2H5NO2. Okay, so 3.06 times 10 to the negative 3 grams of C2H5O6. Oh, sorry, C2H5NO2. So we want to go to moles of the compound, so multiply by that ratio, grams of C2H5NO2, and then moles of C2H5NO2. Remember, one mole, whoop, one mole of anything equals the molar mass of that in grams. So one mole would be what it is on the periodic table, right? We need to find out the molar mass of C2H5NO2. So you guys try it. I'm just gonna put in, I'm just gonna do with a quick hand version and then I'll put in the answer. But we need to calculate it for two carbons, five hydrogens, one nitrogen, and two oxygen. So let's go. So 12.01 times two plus 1.008 times five plus one times 14.01. So let me just add these up. So this plus this plus this so far. 
And then plus, we have 16 times 2. So we should get 75.07. If you don't get this answer, go back to the previous calculate molar mass questions. You just got to perfect that first in order to get this answer. Okay. But now the word gram of glycine will cancel out and all you got to do is 3.06 times 10 to the negative 3 divided by 75.07. And what do you get? So you get 4.08 times 10 to the negative fifth moles of C2H5NO2. You need three sig figs. The first you're given had three sig figs. So that's the answer to the first one. 4.08 times 10 to the negative fifth moles of C2H5NO2. Now let's try to set up the first one and then we'll do the other ones quick hand. So we got to find the moles of each atom. So you start with now what you're given, what your answer was. So 4. 0.08 times 10 to the negative fifth moles of C2H5NO2 moles of C2H5NO2 on the bottom. And now let's just start from left to right. So let's find out how many moles of carbon there are. So what would be these two numbers? Well, this is your mole ratio again, right? And you take it from one whole compound. So if you had one whole compound, one mole of the entire compound, how many carbons would you have? Oh, you would have two. So for carbon, you would times the number by two. So it would be 4.08 times 10 to the negative fifth times two. So that would be 8.16 times 10 to the negative fifth moles of C. I just want to, I'm pretty sure that's correct, but you, you never know. Okay, perfect. Now, let's just erase. And let's just say, okay, instead of carbon, what would I do for hydrogen? How many hydrogen are here? Oh, there's, there's five. So then it would be a five. So 4.08 times 10 to the negative fifth times five would be 2.04 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of H. Okay, and then... If we wanted N, right, how many N's are here? Oh, well, there's no subscript, so that means that there's just one. So it would be the same number. I'm just going to put it on the left-hand side here. 4.08 times 10 to the negative fifth moles of N. And then last but not least, let's do it for oxygen. We have O. How many oxygens are here? There's two. So the two. So it would technically be the same number as the carbon one, which was um, the 8.16. So 8.16 times 10 to the negative fifth moles of carbon. And that's all the moles of each of the atoms. Pretty simple. I'll just say that these two are for B. Okay, and now let's erase. We're moving on to C. Okay, so that one was pretty cool. That one was easy. You guys are getting the hang of it, though. I, I know it. So letter C. They're saying now 25 pounds of the herbicide Treflan, C13, H16N2O4F, and they're saying that one pound equals 454 grams. So the first thing we got to do is we have to convert 25 pounds into grams. So... Let's try it out. So 25, oops, 25 pounds. We don't want pounds anymore, so that goes on the bottom. We want grams. And what's the conversion? They told us that one pound was 454 grams. If you guys are too, um, you know, a little leery on um, your conversions, go back to chapter one. We did tons of conversions there, and that will totally help you guys out. So pounds cancels out. So 25 times 454, and we should get roughly uh, 1,000, uh, actually 11,350. So I'm just going to say 
14, yeah, we'll say, we'll actually say one, yeah, that's good enough, because we have to do sig figs. So there was two sig figs here, so we need two sig figs at the end. So 11,000 grams. Now we just got to convert to um, moles. So now if I take the 11,000 grams of C13, H16, N2O4F, gram of C13, H16, N2O4F goes on the bottom, and mole of C13, H16, N2O4F goes on the top. One mole equals the molar mass in grams. So this is the number that we got to find on the periodic table. So let's do it quickly. We have carbon, so we have 13 times 12.01 plus we have 16 times 1.008 plus 2 times 14.01 plus 4 times 16 plus 19. And you should get 283.278 grams of this whole compound cancels out. And you just do 11,000 divided by 283.278. So roughly you get 39 moles. 39 moles of C13, H16, N2O4F. Okay, now let's try to figure out, let's do a quick shorthand version. So I'm going to just say 39 moles of C13, H16, N2O4F. Okay, so now let's do the quick hand version of how we would find the moles of each atom. Now remember what we did. All we did was we had to just times by how many we saw. So for carbon, there's 13 carbon. So what do you think we're going to have to do to find out moles of carbon? Oh, we would just have to times by 13. And wh what do you think we would have to do for hydrogen if we wanted to find out moles of hydrogen? Oh, we would just have to times by 16. And for nitrogen, we would just have to, if we wanted to find the moles of nitrogen, we would just have to times by 2, etc., etc. Do you see what I'm doing here? All we do is we just take as many subscripts as we have, and we just multiply it by the moles, and that will get you the individual atoms. So, let's get down to it. So, if we just take 39 and times it by 13, you get 500 and seven moles of carbon. Now let's do the hydrogen, 39 times 16. And you get 624 moles of hydrogen. These are crazy numbers. Let's do nitrogen, so 39 times two, because there was two moles of nitrogen, so that's 78 moles of nitrogen. And then I'll just finish up on the other side. We have oxygen and fluorine. So what do you think? 39 times 4 for oxygen. So that would give me 156 moles of oxygen. And then last but not least, there was only one fluorine. So technically 39 times 1, which is 39 moles of fluorine. And that's the answer to C. You got all the answers to C. There was six of them. Crazy. All right. Let's erase, and we're moving on to D. How do you guys feel? I think it's getting easier. Practice makes almost perfect, because no one's perfect, right? But very, very close. All right, so now this one, you start off with kilograms, right? Point one two five kilograms of the insecticide Paris Green, which is Cu4ASO32CH3CO22. So there's two things that I don't like here. First thing is we have to convert kilograms to grams. Now, you guys should know the quick hand version. If you want to go from kilograms to grams, all you got to do is just multiply by 1,000 and vice versa. If you want to go from grams to kilograms, you divide by 1,000. 
So automatically, if I just take this number and turn it into grams, I can just times by a thousand and I would get 125 grams. Of what now? This whole big mess of a compound. And I see that they've thrown in oxygen at a couple of different spots. They've thrown in carbons at a couple of different spots. So I like to just make it all nice and pretty and just combine it and compartmentalize it so that you only see one carbon and one oxygen and then you just have it as a subscript. So let's try. So this is still going to be Cu4, right? Because that's the only time that they say Cu. Now how many arsenics are here? There's one inside the parentheses, but there's two. That means that it's divvied in between all the parentheses. So really it's As2. Now, how many oxygens are there total? Well, there was three in here, right? But there's two outside, so there's a total of six here, plus two times two, so plus four. So we actually have a total of O10. I'm just gonna erase that. And now let's move on. I see that I have two carbons in here, Right, But this 2 is telling us that everything inside needs to be multiplied by 2. So if I have 2 inside times by 2, it's really C4. And then hydrogen, there's 3 inside here, but there's 2 on the outside. So how many hydrogens really? 3 times 2 is 6. That's a much easier way to do your molar masses and find the moles of each atom because then you won't have to be, you know, grab in your carbons and oxygens from all different places. It's all right here. So now we just got to find the moles. So times by the molar mass, grams of that compound goes on the bottom. So Cu4As2O10C486 and moles of the compound goes up on top. Cu4As2O10C4H6. And remember, one mole of anything equals the molar mass on the periodic table. So we just got to find out what that number is on the periodic table. So let's go for it. Copper would be 4 times 63.55. I'm just doing the quick hand version. You guys know what you're doing. Two uh, Plus arsenic, which is 2 times 74.92. Plus... We got oxygen next, that's 16 times 10. Then comes carbon, there's four of them, 12.01. And then finally hydrogen, there's six, and then each is 1.008. So we get 618.128. Cancel this whole thing out, and now you're just left with moles. So 125 divided by 618.128, we need three sig figs, so 0 0.202 moles of Cu4As2O10C4H6. So that goes here, 0 0.202 moles of cu 4 as 2 O, 10, C, 4, H, 6. Now we just got to find the individual parts. So let's just try that shorthand version again, and then we'll get all the answers, right? So if we wanted to find out the moles of just copper, what would we have to do? Oh, we would just have to multiply by 4 because there is 4 copper. What about for arsenic? If I wanted to find out moles of A, S, I would have to times by 2. Why did I put C over here. Oof. This should have been four. I don't know why I put a C. That's okay though. Okay. And then same thing, right? If I wanted to find out moles of oxygen, you would multiply by 10. And you keep going. So for carbon, you would multiply by four. And by hydrogen, you'd multiply by six from the total amount. So let's give it a shot. So 0 0.202 times 4 is 0 0.808 moles of copper. 0 0.202 times 2 for arsenic would be 0 0.404 moles of AS. 
I'll finish up the other ones on the other side. 0 0.202 times 10 is just 2.02 .02 moles of oxygen. Then we have 0 0.202 times 4 for carbon is 0 0.808 moles of carbon. And then last but not least, we have 0 0.202 times 6 is 1.21 moles of hydrogen. And those are all of your answers for D. Check that off. Let's go and erase it. And then we're doing last one. Okay, last but not least. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so now this one I also don't really like because it starts off with milligrams. But we need to start off with grams in order to make it work to go to moles. So we should know, I'm going to put it over here. If we want to go from milligrams to grams, all we have to do is divide by 1,000. That's the quick end version. And then vice versa. You could multiply by 1,000 to get to milligrams. So if I just take this number and divide by 1,000, you will get grams. So this would be 0 0.325 grams of this mess, which I want to clean up, right? I'm just going to put this as E. So let's see. How many total carbon are here? There's six here. There's one here, so that's seven, so six and one. And there's another one here and another one here. So six plus one plus one plus one is six, seven, eight, nine. So that gets rid of all the carbons. Now let's move on to the hydrogens. There's four here. So let me actually do this in a different color. So there's four here. There's one here. And there's three here. So 4 plus 1 plus 3, that's 8. So H8. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then last but not least, we got to do the oxygen. There's two oxygens here, and there's two oxygens here. So 2 plus 2 is 4. So that would be O4. You see how easier it is to work with these types of molecular formulas and not a whole slew of things. So if it's a huge, big compound, just simplify it. Grab all of your elements and just throw them together. But now we got to get moles, so multiply by that ratio. Grams of C9H8O4 goes on the bottom. Mole of C9H8O4 goes up on the top. And remember, for this stage, one mole of anything equals the molar mass. So let's get it. 9 times 12.01 plus... 8 times 1.008 plus 4 times 16. You get 180. 180.154 grams of aspirin will cancel out, and you are left with, ooh, that was ugly, you are left with 0.325 divided by that answer. We need three sig figs, so I'll say 1.80 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of C9H8O4. That's the answer to the first part. So 1.80 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of C9H8O4. Now let's just get the three different atoms. So if we wanted to find out for carbon, moles of carbon, what do you think we're going to have to multiply? By 9. And if we wanted to find out, oop, if we wanted to find out the moles, this is a mole of C. And if we wanted to find out the moles of H, we would multiply by 8. And if we wanted to find out the moles of oxygen, we would multiply by 4. It's easy as that. So, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 3 times 9 would get me 0 0.162 moles of carbon. 1.8 times 10 to the negative 3 times 8 is 0 0.0144 moles of hydrogen. And then last but not least, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 3 times 4 is 0 0.0072 moles of oxygen. And that's the end for the, this crazy, crazy question. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope this helped. If it did, hit the like button. And if you want to help us out, 
which I very much appreciate. Thank you so much. You could click the subscribe button. And that way it helps us out by getting the word out. It also helps you out by knowing when our next set of questions are coming out. Um, So thank you so much. This was awesome. I'll see you guys all in the next question. Have an awesome day. Bye.